We zijn hier in Slowakije. Uh, Kozic, om precies te zijn, bij de fabriek van Isotec. Nou, even kijken of we het logo kunnen laten zien. Het is... even kijken... Daar dus. Uh, Isotec zit hier pas zes maanden tot nou, een jaartje hebben we begrepen. En in die tijd hebben ze heel veel weten te doen. Ze hebben de eerste verdieping zo'n beetje helemaal verbouwd. Er komt een anodizing room en dat schijnt heel bijzonder te zijn, want het anodiseren van uh, aluminium en metalen is een Heel lastig proces waarbij heel veel chemicaliën nodig zijn en dus zijn er ook heel veel reguleringen. Maar het laat wel eigenlijk zien hoe zij bezig zijn en hoe zij uh, te werk gaan. Want ze doen alles zo'n beetje in eigen huis. Van het ontwerp tot het voorzien van componentjes op een pcb en uh, uh, het shippen, logistiek, alles wordt hier in eigen huis gedaan. En wij hebben ook een eigen filtertje gebouwd en we weten nu hoe ongelooflijk lastig dat kan zijn. Het is echt priegelwerk en we hebben nog maar de simpelste plug gemaakt. Dus moet je nagaan als je een Titan moet bouwen of een Polaris. Nou, een Polaris is niet zo heel lastig, maar zelfs dat is al veel meer werk dan zo'n klein pokkenplugje. Het uh, was heel interessant om te zien in ieder geval. Uh, er zijn 16 mensen in het team en die 16 mensen doen dus alles van R&D tot het uh, uitshippen en verpakken van, uh, van, die, uh, van die spullen. Uh, het was een interessante dag. Wij gaan jullie laten zien hoe het allemaal hier te werk gaat en wat er voor nodig is om een filter bij u in de set te krijgen. Veel plezier met kijken. Dit is een Japanese CNC machine. Um, the guys are currently just putting together some Polaris because we've got a lot of Polaris that need to go out at the moment. Um, and we'll do them in five different specifications in EU, UK, Oz, US and Swiss. And I think we're pretty much all on EU at the moment. And uh, you can also see some ascension cables being finished off on the far side with the heat shrink. So, yeah, but it's a constantly moving production cycle. All products are being set on this device. Voltage wise or current wise of 50, 60 hertz. So you can set the frequency, the voltage. Just plug this into Genesis. Yeah. Yeah, it so you need to check the functionality of the unit, of the product. Give them the 60 hertz frequency. And 230 volts. Just press the start button. So an output voltage is being shown on this display. 230. And the distortion is above. 000 something. This is an input voltage. Distortion of the mains. Frequency. Frequency. If he switches this to 50 hertz. So again, input data being shown. So input voltage. VHD. And frequency. He's going to show you the input voltage. Reduced one. 237 volts. 
I wish you wanted to so play. Two thirty on a display. Mm -hmm. So he's going to drop it, reduce it. Yeah, of course. Last to Down to one eighty. So output all st still shows 230, but the input has been dropped down to 160, 170. So input now is 160. 150. Only that now just the output voltage dropped a bit, slightly, because it was way too low. The input yeah. voltage was way too low. So if we have 150, so there's, a, there's a breakdown of the curve. So. Uh, but if you it have starts to affect yeah. the output voltage. So 150, when the yeah. 150 yeah. is when it starts to affect the sine wave and also the, the output voltage and PhD as well. Um, and this basically takes the elements of Isotech clean power and protection um, that we use in half of it and then adds in the technology needed for the um, installation market. Um, and this is kind of coupled up with our app that we're still currently working on. Um, and we're probably looking to release this in end of quarter three, start of quarter four, um, out into some markets for some hard testing. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be in three different product levels. We'll have alpha, beta, theta, and um, the sort of level of protection will go up through the range. Um, and we have it with 16 outlets or eight. So basically, um, when you connect to our ISEC Smart Power, um, you'll see all of the sockets in your device come up, and you can basically go into the sockets, you can name the sockets for your CD player, your amplifier, um, DAC, anything, so you can just call that CD, let's call that CD1, and just put that in there. And if you confirm that, so now we've got CD shown on that socket. Um, Obviously, in your in your system, you would have a router to be controlling it, and we've also got a router feature. So, if you change this to a router, um, basically, what will happen is if you do a hard restart of the products, or if you have a cut or something, it will ensure the router is never turned off. Um, because obviously, if you turn the router off, you can't talk to the product. Um, we've also got um, the ability to lock sockets, so you can lock them so you can't, no one can touch them, no one can change the names, no one can do anything to them. Um, and then each socket you basically can um, overview your power consumption in watts um, and monitor it from this one screen. If you have the beta 16, uh, you'd have 16 sockets, but then you can group them together uh, and you could have all the sockets on here, you could have 100 sockets. Um, if we go back into the home screen, what we do have, which I don't think I can show you, is the smart events. Um, I think we'll have to be connected yet, yeah, it's not going to let me go through to it. The smart events are, um, you can do delayed times, um, you can set products to come on at certain times of the day. Um, so if you've got a tube out of the fire and you want it to come on you know, an hour before you get home from work so it's warmed up, ready for you, um, you can set that to come on each day and then you can also set them to go off. Um, and because it's got the sequential startup through it, you can delay the time between each power uh, socket turning on. Um, so if you've got something in your uh, first socket which takes a huge load, um, you can delay the time that it's between the first and the second socket to give that time to power up. I mean, we use a lot of our sort of own design parts. Um, you know, from PCBs to chokes to internal wiring, it's all thought through very carefully. Um, and I think our focus is more on really ensuring that they get the best quality. Um, and we're not looking to cut corners and cut prices and make things cheap. Um, we use the highest grade stuff. Um, you know, if you look at our, uh, from optimum up to the synchro cable, up to the ascension, it's all got anode cast, continuous cast, copper through the cables. Um, the internal wiring from Aquarius Sigmas upwards is also this, the PCOCC wire. So, you know, the high quality parts ensure that we produce high quality items and that, I think, really sets us out from the rest. Um, I think one thing we really also focus on that I think probably sets us among, pushes up there is that, you know, 
the quality and the the control of the quality is fantastic. Um, the failure rate is minimal. Um, if we ever do have anything, it's jumped on very quickly. We support our customers, we support our distributors, um, and the main thing is that the companies run on passion for quality and for producing the best. Um, you know, Keith, the director and the owner and the brains behind the operation is is fully always thinking about the next thing he's he just loves it it's just the passion that he puts into it and that goes from day one to finishing the project i mean he sees everything through from the start to the end he's doing the majority of it and also you know we've got a great team here um and we all enjoy working together and you know at the end of the day if you don't enjoy it then what's the point so yeah